everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Tyneco Pier 1 station. Tyneco did send me the sample, but I want you to know that any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Take a look at the retail box and packaging here. Everything looks nice. Couple of key features highlighted on the packaging. This comes with a two year warranty. Now let's go ahead, let's open this up and see what's inside. Here's a look at just some of the included contents. We have a lot to go over. First, you'll see our product literature. We have an instruction manual for the vacuum cleaner as well as for the clean station and Tyneco's customer service and contact information. Next, you'll see multi-purpose cleaning tool and brush. Then we have our zero tangle brush roller here, the main piece of our vacuum. LEDs built in, red and blue bristle brush there. Tyneco branded rubber wheels. You'll also notice on this side, charging contacts for it. Then you'll see our main body and tube extension here. Nice metallic construction, like the finish on that, looks great. Then you'll see our main vacuum portion here with our trigger and power button there. Tyneco iLoop technology branding. Here's our dustbin with our max indicator and we can pop to manually release as needed, but don't forget, this self empties. Then you'll see our auto and max indicator up at the top, Tyneco's logo and branding. We have our display right here with all of our different icons and a nice explanation of each one and what they mean. Super lightweight, small and compact, definitely smaller than your typical Tyneco cordless vacuum cleaner, but I like the feel of this in my hand and I really like its size and how lightweight it is. There's a quick peek at the bottom again, they're not hiding from you. Customer support information right there. We also have a nice breakdown of that digital display, what you can expect, some quick maintenance tips and tricks, things like that. Then moving right along, we have some of our different attachments and accessories. So you'll see right here, we kind of our mini brush roller, good size, and it's got its own built-in spot in the stand. Crevice tool and brush tool, so a little multi-tool action there. Cleaning brush. Tyneco's logo and branding. Every piece has a spot on this base. You'll see where the rest of the base is gonna be installed here. And then our vacuum will rest in this section. Now let's go ahead, let's look at more of the contents. Moving right along, we have two pieces of our pier station right here. This is the top piece that the vacuum's actually gonna slide down into. And this is how it's gonna be able to self empty right in here. So neat, Tyneco's logo and branding. I really like the color that they chose for this. It's unique and different, definitely refreshing. Up at the top, we have all of our control buttons and our display right there, walking us through different settings and our self-cleaning mode. Please remove that sticker before use. You'll see the bottom of this, it's gonna actually snap into the top of this piece right here, which snaps into the base plate that we already looked at. So this is the majority of the Pier 1 station. Here you'll see same color scheme and pattern. Max indicator letting us know very easily once it's full in time to empty this base. Should last at least 60 days depending on your environment and how often you clean and run your vacuum, how dirty and messy your household is, you get the idea, but that's a good ballpark estimate for us. Lock and unlock indicator there. You'll see on this side where the vacuum is gonna come in to charge, there's our charging contacts. Up at the top we have a button we can press to release the dustbin here, so let's look at that dustbin. There's a quick peek on the inside with it removed. Dustbin's gonna have some contacts up at the top and we are able to remove this, just twist to unlock. Gently pull off the cap. You'll see we have a filter in there that we need to make sure we're cleaning and maintaining. And then we can put all that back on. Just repeat that in reverse order, cap on. There we go, we now have it locked again. You'll also notice on this unit, it's gonna empty from the bottom. So this little mechanism right here and lever is gonna be what we press to release to empty everything. So very convenient there to just dump everything out. Look at how massive this is. This is awesome. I really like that we have the clear indicator and plenty of space for our vacuum to work with to make it last for months, literally months. All right, let's look at the rest of this unit now. You'll see on the back side here, additional product info. We have another filter down here. So make sure that you're cleaning and maintaining everything as needed. So it's great that we have that there. And you can follow the little prompts 
on this tag here, but make sure you remove the packaging from the deodorizer. Very bottom again is going to snap into that base plate. We have three points where it's going to snap down that we can press to remove if we ever need to disassemble this for any reason. Pay attention to integrated power cord there. And we'll look at the very top and in. You'll see the different connection options and our main tube and channel right there. So now we have a couple more contents to still go over. In your box, you'll find another box that consists of your fur free kit. That kit has everything that you're seeing right here from its quick start guide with installation, operation and maintenance instructions. We have a drawstring bag. We have our main accessory and brush here with trigger to easily pull off all that hair. It will push it down into here and release it and it'll suck up into your vacuum. You'll have to connect this to the included hose, which is then connected to your vacuum and base. So that's a quick look at everything that's included with our Tyneco Pier 1 station. Now let's go ahead, let's set everything up. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble the station itself. We'll start with the base. We're gonna add this piece on it. We'll just snap right in. It's only gonna fit one way. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and put this piece on the very top. So line it up just like so. And there's a little channel in the back for the cord. And then it'll just snap right in like so. And now we have our final piece, also only gonna fit one way. This thing is tall. And then just gently press in place and there we go. We now have our station assembled. Now let's get our vacuum up and running. Our vacuum also has three pieces to assemble. They're gonna snap in place and they will also only fit one way. So just go ahead, snap everything in. And there we go. We now have the vacuum fully assembled. We're gonna put it on the base just like so. And it will snap right in. Look at that, everything's standing upright right there. Now let's plug it in and charge it up. Really quick, I wanted to show you the built-in LED lights so you can get a feel for how bright they are here in the studio. Take a look, love the four light array there. Plenty of light to be able to see all out in front of you, knowing exactly what you're vacuuming up. I mean, look at how bright that is. You can see all the detail on the remote control there. Able to see everything in front of you while you're cleaning. We just finished our first clean. Let's take a look at the real world results right here. Look at how full we got the dustbin. So we definitely exceeded the maximum line here, but I did that 
on purpose because now we can try out the self empty to see with a jam packed full dustbin how powerful it is and will it be able to clean everything out of here. But look at that disgusting tons of pet hair in there. That's what you're seeing a lot of crumbs and really fine dirt and dust. We'll be sure to look at the contents after we empty it out. But in light of that clean, let's look at our brush rollers and attachments. So here's our small roller brush. This one has the most hair on it, as you probably would expect, given the longer bristles on here. Doesn't look that bad, though, but we got some human hair tangled around that you're going to want to clean off. Now, looking at the main brush roller, this did a fantastic job barely any tangles at all for all of that hair that we vacuumed up. That is super impressive. That speaks to the quality of this design. Now looking at it from the other side with the cover, you will start to notice some dust and dirt collected right there at the top. But now let's go ahead, let's empty it. Cleanliness checking, self cleaning mode. All right, so that self empty was awesome. This is totally a game changer, super convenient. And the good news is we did not get anything left over in here. Nothing got stuck or clogged or anything along those lines. Now I do want to point out that we did get some dust build up on the outside of this after it's self emptied. So that's going to be because it's emptying the base and a little bit of that dirt and debris is going to come right back on that back side in there, but no big deal. This looks great. I can't believe how good of a job it did, especially because we had so much hair in there. Here is all of our hair emptied out. Now what's interesting is it didn't fall all the way down to the bottom. Some heavier particles did, but this glob of hair is now at the top. Let's go ahead. Let's twist this off and see what we're working with up at the top. That filter looks amazing still. Nothing else on the inside there, so not bad. Nothing to note or anything there. Now let's look at the very bottom. We're gonna pop this off without making too big of a mess. You can see down in there, and let's see if we can get some of those contents out. All right, so here's a look at all of our dirty contents here. Amazing, amazing, amazing. This is just from one pass. Look at that. So filtration's top notch. Again, we got really fine dirt and dust in there as well as the larger pieces that you would expect. But unbelievable. Hair's not gonna be a problem for it. That no tangle brush is great too. Didn't have anything to worry about there. So I love seeing that, that we can get that much hair out and no issues on the brush and nothing clogging or anything like that. So super, super impressed with what it's able to pick up and the fact that it can actually empty itself and not have any issues because the whole point of that technology is to enable you to have to do less and less and less in the whole cleaning process. Don't think for a minute I was gonna forget to try out the pet grooming. Take a look how we have our brush and hose attachment connected. Just remove the main brush roller and you'll install that right there at the base. Then up at the top, when you're ready to use it, just go ahead and press the paw print. Pet grooming mode. Now we're ready to start brushing our pet. Dougie, how was it? Did you like it? So how does our Pier 1 station stack up against the competition? We'll be comparing it within Tyneco's brand lineup, as well as all of the cordless vacuum cleaners that we have personally tested. So first up, let's look at the price of this vacuum. You'll see within Tyneco's brand, this is gonna cost a couple hundred dollars more than the average, but there's kind of an asterisk there because this is their only cordless vacuum cleaner with self empty base. So you're definitely gonna be paying a premium for that feature. And same can be true for all the vacuums we've tested. This is the only one we've tested with that base. That's going to add a couple hundred bucks to the price. And we've covered vacuum cleaners from, you know, bottom end, entry level, all the way up to top of the line flagship vacuums like this one. Next up, let's look at battery life. This is measured in minutes. The Pier 1 has a 60 minute battery life. That's 13 minutes more than Tyneco's brand average. 
and it's about nine minutes more than the overall average of all cordless vacuum cleaners. So that's a good baseline just to get a feel for what you should be expecting with your cordless vacuum. Next, we're looking at bin capacity. This is measured in liters. You'll see the Pier 1 has six liters of bin capacity because we're able to count and factor in the self-empty bin. That'll last us for days, weeks, and months. Okay, compared to the brand average though, you'll see 0.6 liters. You heard me correctly, not six liters, 0.6 liters is the average because that's just counting the little dust bin that each vacuum has. Now, I couldn't find any data on our Pier 1 stations bin, but looking at it compared to other Tyne Kovacs, if 0.6 is our average, I'd say it's a little bit less than average. I'd have to guess like 0.4 or 0.5 liters. So just keep that in mind. Technically, it has a smaller bin and a larger bin, substantially larger with that self empty. The average across all the vacuums we reviewed is coming in right at 0.6 liters as well. Next, we're looking at our CFM score. We capture this in house. This is a great indicator, get a feel for how good of a job it's gonna do cleaning. It doesn't necessarily equate to a better clean, but usually it's one of the key leading indicators. So the CFM for the Pier 1 station is 32. Tyneco's average is 31, and our overall average is 32. So right at the average clean, that you can expect out of a cordless vacuum cleaner. And you'll see with our deep cleaning score where we embed coffee grounds in the carpet and we measure it before and after, our Pier 1 got a score of 95 out of the possible 100. That's right in line with Tyneco's brand average. And that's slightly one point higher than the typical average cordless vac. Moving right along to decibels with this metric, the higher your score, the louder your vacuum is gonna be. So you want to have a lower score here. We test this in a room with carpet at max suction settings. So the Pier 1 topped out at 88 decibels. The brand average overall for Tyneco came in at 85. So we're slightly above average there. And compared to all tests that were below average by two decibels, that got a score of 80. Six. So keep in mind, it's hard to tell if you're in a room with a vacuum operating at 85 versus 88 or anywhere in between, which one's going to be louder. So just know it will be noticeable while you're cleaning, but it shouldn't be ear piercing or anything like unbearable. It's just a vacuum cleaner, vacuuming carpet. Next up, we have our vacuum weight. This vacuum cleaner is very light in your hand, versatile, easy to use, coming in at 5.3 pounds. That's 0.2 pounds higher than the brand average of 5.1, and it's 0.3 pounds greater than the overall average of five. Some of that is skewed lower just due to some of the cheaper vacuum cleaners that we have reviewed. For this one being so powerful and having a long long lasting battery, I'm surprised with how light it is. So after using our Tyneco Pier 1 station, let me share with you my final thoughts. There's a lot to love about this vacuum cleaner. Fantastic all-in-one bundled package. Really, really enjoyable using this vacuum cleaner. Great for hard floors and carpets, big messes, small messes. It will be able to tackle it. I really like their tangle-free brush roll. It does a great job cleaning and not staying tangled. Overall, the self-empty base over-delivered in my opinion. I'm really happy with its performance, powerful suction to get everything out of our dustbin. It did a nice job. The vacuum itself, great and easy to use, super lightweight. If that's something that's important to you, this will be a comfortable vacuum cleaner for you to use to clean around your house. The LED light is one of the brightest lights I've ever seen on a vacuum. That's fantastic. I love seeing that. I hope in the future more brands take note. And I still think the light could be even brighter. And it'd be nice if they actually spread out those LEDs even further and maybe even along the sides of the brush roller, not only just front coverage, but side coverage would be really cool to see something like that in the future. Basically strip lights all around the base, maybe even giving you 360 coverage. I'd love to be able to see that and have our floor even illuminated more. Now I had to think long and hard about what I'd wanna see improved on this vacuum in the future. And here's what I came up with. The first one is the vacuum doesn't stand upright on its own. I feel like this is a big miss with this vacuum cleaner. I'm not sure if that's possible. I'm assuming it is, but I didn't engineer this thing. But I don't know why, even with the self-empty base, you can't design it in a way that it can stand upright on its own. I just like having that. I don't want to set it down or lean it against something. Then it's going to fall over. If I'm being critical too, there's no removable battery. For some of you, that might be important. I prefer to have it just so I can have a couple on standby or if something happens, it's a lot easier to repair and replace. But that is something I wanted to point out. And lastly, this will be for you pet owners out there. I'd like to see another brush attachment or maybe just a way to take the brush out of the attachment that comes with it and give us another maybe finer comb, sharper comb. That one feels a little bit dull. It's great to be able to get some 
hair out, but I want like the Furminator style where it can really get a lot of fur off of your pet. It's great to have that attachment if your dog is comfortable around vacuum cleaners. If it's not, good luck trying to get it to be, but if your dog is comfortable, you will enjoy having that feature if your pet sheds a lot. So if you're shopping for a cordless vacuum cleaner today and you have the space to set up a unit like this, I think you'll really appreciate having that self-empty feature. Depending on your budget, Shark seems to be the budget-friendly option, followed by the mid-range of Samsung and Tyneco. And then depending on if you're just buying a regular cordless vacuum cleaner or not, this is gonna compete price-wise with a Dyson that won't offer self-empty. You could argue maybe it has slightly better performance, things like that, but you'll be picking up a vacuum that's good enough, giving you a nice, thorough, and deep clean, and you pick up that self-empty.